what is the sum of the factors of 11 factorial? And no, I'm not asking what is the sum of the factors of 11, with quite a bit of emphasis. No, this is 11 factorial. So for those who don't know, 11 factorial is an any number factorial. It's just the multiplication of all numbers less than that. So 11 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10 times 11. And so 3 factorial will be 1 times 2 times 3. Uh, 18 factorial will be the same thing as 11 factorial, but also times 12, times 13, times 14, times 15, times 16, times 17, times 18. So that's factorial. And the question asks, what is the sum of the factors of specifically 11 factorial? Now, this question, at first, one might say, hmm, we're given such an easy multiplication. I see a factor, a factor, a factor, a factor. And they would say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11. That's my answer. Now, that's not quite right, though, because we can also get factors by combinations of these. Consider, for example, 5 times 9, 45. That's also a perfectly valid factor of 11 factorial. So now we have to ask, how do we get to every factor of 11 factorial? If we could somehow generate factors of 11 factorial, well, then we could surely figure out what the sum of them was, because we could just sum over all of our generated factors. Now, in general, when you're trying to deal with factors and you're given a number like this, which is composite, a good idea, good starting point, is to find its prime factorization. So let's try to rewrite 11 factorial in terms of 2 to the power of something times 3 to the power of something times 5 to the power of something times 7 to, p to the power of something times 11 to the power of something. And the reason I'm only using the first five prime numbers is because 11 is the last prime number to show up in 11 factorial. So clearly, for example, 13 won't have any powers. So first two, how many powers of two show up? Well, there's one. There are two powers of 2 and 4, so that's 1, we're up to 3 now. There's another 1 and 6, so up to 4. Another one, another 3 and 8, so up to 7. And then another 1 and 10, so we get 8. So we have 2 to the power of 8. And now, for powers of 3, what we're going to get is 1 power of 3. And we get 2 more powers of 3, sorry, another power of 3 here. Here we're going to get 2 more powers of 3, so up to 4 and then no more powers of 3. So 3 to the power of 4. For powers of 5, you clearly see that we just have 5 gives us 1, and then 10 gets us another 1, so up to 2. So we have 5 to the power of 2. And then for 7 and 11, we only get to see 7 and 11 themselves, so we get 1 for both. So we get 7 to the power of 1 times 11 to the power of 1. So this is 11's prime factorization. 2 to the power of 8, 3 to the power of 4, 5 to the power of 2, and then 7 and 11, both to the power of 1, all multiplied together. How might we generate a factor from this? Well, let's remember the definition of a factor. A factor is just a number. So factor of a number, let's say factor of n, is a number such that, so is some other number, a, such that a times some different number b can equal n. So clearly for the number 12, 7 is not a factor because no integer times 7 equals 12. But 4 is a factor because 3 times 4 equals 12. So now that we have a grip on the specific definition of factors, I will pose a question to you. Is the number 2 to the 6th? times 3 squared times 7, a factor of 11 factorial. Is it a factor? Well, without this definition of factor up here, this might actually be a bit challenging. After all, I mean, this is kind of weird. Like, okay, is it actually going to be a factor? Who knows? It might not be a factor. But given this definition, if we're going to test if it's a factor, we all we have to do is try to find a different number. That if we multiply it, we'll get back to our our original number that we're trying to see if it's a factor of. So 11 factorial. Is there a number which 
an integer specifically, which we could multiply by 2 to the 6 times 3 squared times 7, which would get us solve in factorial, there is a very specific number. It is the number that will make this 11 factorial. If you remember, 11 factorial here, this is going to equal 2 to the 8th times 3 to the 4th times 5 squared times 7 to the 1 times 11 to the 1. So if we need 2 to the 6th times 3 squared times 7 to the 1 to equal this, we have to multiply by everything that this number is missing. So by 2 squared, so that this goes up to 8, times 3 squared, so that this goes up to 4, times 5 to the power of 2, so that the 5 to the 0 here goes to 5 squared. No powers of 7, so 7 to the 0, and then 1 power of 11, so that it gets a power of 11. We have to multiply by each of the powers, and then whatever power here, just subtract that from the power that's necessary. So, conversely though, if I asked, is 2 to the 9th a factor of 11 factorial, you would say no, because in order to make it equal the 2 to the 8th over here, you would need to multiply it by 2 to the negative 1, which is definitely not an integer. So, what maybe this is showing you, and I'm just going to move everything here up a little bit so we have more space, what hopefully this is showing you is that in order for a number to be a factor, all of its exponents need to be, well, first off, obviously greater than 0, so that it itself is an integer, greater than or equal to 0, but also less than its corresponding exponents in the actual number, in its prime factorization. So. I'm going to move this up for a little bit more space, too, because we're going to get awesome soon. If this is going to define how we're going to generate factors, that means that we're going to have some notion of factors, any factor d, being some multiplication of 2 to the power of some number times 3 to the power of some number times 5 to the power of some number times 7 to another number times 11 to a fifth number. And all these numbers have to be greater than 0, so a, b, c, d, and e, all greater than or equal to 0, I should say, because they can equal 0. That's just as 1. And then each specific number has to be less than or equal to its corresponding number in the prime factorization. So a less than or equal to 8, b less than or equal to 4, c less than or equal to 2, d less than or equal to 1, and e less than or equal to 1. And this is a perfect recipe for generating factors. Because now we can say, just pick numbers from this list that make all of this work, and bada bing, bada boom, you have a factor. And now, if we're trying to ask for the sum of these factors, well, what's left there is going to be to generate all the factors and then add them together. So, what might the different factors look like? We're going to do something very similar to the trick that we did in the video where we found what the sum of all terminating fractions equals. What we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to have a huge nested sum. So we're going to say first, I'm going to start big because we're going to have to go for a while here. This sigma just means summing. So we're going to start our first index, a, equal to 0 here, because we're starting has to be greater than or equal to 0, and we're going to end it at 8. a is going to be our power of 2, so we're going to the sum of 2 to the power of a. But for every single 2 to the power of a, we also want to consider the sum of, and I guess I'll switch colors, but who knows how long I'll make it here, continuously switching colors. We also want to consider the sum of b starting at 0 and going to 4 of 3 to the power of b. So already what we're seeing is we've gotten every power of 2. For every power of 2, so let's say 2 squared, we're going to also find every power of b. So 2 squared times 3 to the 0, 2 squared times 3 to the 1, 3 squared times 3 to the 2, 2 to the, am I saying 2 squared? Uh, 2, I guess we're 2 squared times 3 to the 3. We're going to find all of those combinations of whatever power of 2 we have and whatever power of 3 we want. And we're going to go through all, all powers of 2. And now that we have this, we say, okay, well, I want to, for every power of 2 and 3, go through every power of 5. So the next step is going to be, for every power of 2 and 3, go through a power of 5. So c is going to start at 0 and go up to 2. 
I'm going to say 5 to the c. So for every power of 2 and 3, we get every power of 5. And then for 5, we're going to go over here and say sum of d starts at 0 goes to 1 of 7 to the d. And then finally, we're going to have where we have, uh, let's see, is there a color? Yeah, 6. So e starts at 0, goes up to 1 of 11 to the e. Now this very, very massive fraction, and I'll try to complete everything in the color I started it in. This massive fraction, what am I calling it a fraction? Multiplication, nested multiplication, is saying for every power of 2, find every power of 3, find every power of 5, find every power of 7, find every power of 11. And this nested multiplication summation something, this is going to generate every single factor of 11 factorial. Because these constraints on the top guarantee that we never go too high, these constraints on the bottom guarantee that we always start as low as we can, and then this multiplication of summation, because of properties of foiling and so on, as we add the 2's here and multiply it with the 3's here and the 5's here and the 7's here and the 11's here, we're going to find every factor. You can verify it for a smaller case yourself if you want. Now though, let's consider what we're doing, because what we're doing is we're saying, take the sum of all the 2's, so we're going to have 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 all the way on to 2 to the 8. Take this, multiply it by all of the 3's, so 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, all the way on to 3 to the 4th, and then multiply that by, and then all the 5's, so 5 to the 0 plus 5 to the 1, and multiply all of that by, and then the 7's, so 7 to the 0 plus, oh, and 5 has to go up to 2, excuse me, so 5 to the 1 plus 5 to the 2, multiply this by, and then you're getting the point probably now, 7 to the 0 plus 7 to the 1, and multiply all that by the powers of 11, so 11 to the 0 plus 11 to the 1. Ah, maybe I got enough parentheses, who knows. So, it's this nested multiplication, but it doesn't really matter this nested, because multiplication has a nice property called associativity, which is that A times B times C is precisely equivalent to A times B times C. So, this is associativity right here, nice friend. Because of multiplication's associativity, which I guess I'll write associativity, we can say, nice, sure it's nested, let's just break it apart from being nested though. So, we come down here and we say, hmm, I know that you're nested, but now you're not going to be nested anymore. So, let's move this up a little bit so I have space. Now what we say is we're just going to take this 2 stuff, so we're going to say 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 all the way on until 2 to the 8th. Take that, just multiply it by 3 to the 0 plus 3 to the 1 plus 3 to the 2 all the way on until 3 to the 4th. I guess I probably could have just written 3 to the 3rd there. <laughs> times 5 to the 0 plus 5 to the 1 times 5 to the 2 on and on and on with the sevens also, although, you know, it's just a few things and we're going to have to calculate it soon anyway, so I'll write it out. And then 11 to the 0 plus 11 to the 1. And you can see how, here how this multiplication, this is going to capture every single possible factor. Because, let's, let's play a game. You make a factor. Now, because you can't actually communicate with you, with me, I'll make a factor for you. The factor is going to be 2 to the 4 times 3 cubed times 5 to the 1 times 7 to the 0 times 11 to the 1. We agree this is a valid factor of of what 11 factorial was, which is 2 to the 8th times 3 to the 4th times 5 squared times 7 to the 1 times 11 to the 1. It's a valid factor because we can multiply it by 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 1, 5 to the 1, 7 to the 1, and 11 to the 0. This is a valid factor. My question is, where do we get it? in this multiplication as we FOIL it out. We get it when we pick the 2 to the 4th right here, the 3 to the 3rd right there, the 5 to the 1 right here, the 7 to the 0 right here, and the 11 to the 1 right there. When we pick all of those numbers to multiply together, we get this factor. If I wanted this to be a 2 to the 8th instead, we would just pick the 2 to the 8th. 
So, you see what's going on here. We can pick any combination we want. Alright, perfect. Well, now we actually do have quite a bit of mathematics if we wanted to actually calculate this out. And there's only one thing I want to actually show you, which is that this 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, all the way up to 2 to the 8, uh, that would have a slightly nicer sum because powers of 2 tend to do something nice where if you add them all up, you're going to get um, the power of 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So what I mean is, so 2 to the 8th is uh, 256. 2 to the 7th would be 128, 2 to the 6th would be 64. When you add up all of those, you're going to get 1 minus the next power of 2, which is 512, right? Because, like, consider, for example, a simpler case, which is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. This is going to be 12, and then plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15, which is also... 2 to the, this is 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th minus 1, which is 16 minus 1. Anyway, so if you wanted to do it with mental math, this would be probably your first step for only powers of 2, would be to say that this is all going to be just 2 to the 9th, which is 512. Um, wait, is it? Uh, it's 256 times 2 is 512 minus 1 is 511. And then I'm going to pause the video here and get a calculator to calculate the rest of this, though, not to bore you. And boom. And boom again. And wait. Boom again. So this is what the addition and multiplication comes out to. This relatively gross number, 20775216, the sum of the factors of 11 factorial. But more than this number itself, I hoped that you enjoyed the process of seeing how can we, if we're going to be summing the factors, how can we even generate the factors? And we realized we had these constraints, and that all came from our realization that a factor is just any number that a different number can multiply to get back to your original one. So I hope you enjoyed this video.